today we're going to talk about handbag safety when you have an expensive purse i know travel season is coming up for so many of us let's just talk about some of the things i've been doing over the years to keep myself safe as someone who's owned luxury bags for decades now and who has traveled through europe with them safely this is just based on my own experience i would love to hear from all of you if you have better ones if you disagree with me this is not meant to be an extremely comprehensive look at all the ways you can keep your belongings safe so let's talk about it so the first and most obvious place to start is to make sure that your bags have insurance just a quick reminder that if you've acquired something expensive make sure that your homeowners or renters or content insurance reflects that and if you have something of very high value you can even purchase often a rider on top of those to just cover that specific object. I'm gonna take for granted that you guys know just basic street safety. Don't flaunt your really expensive belongings. Don't walk in sketchy laneways by yourself. You know, don't go to dangerous areas. I know sometimes it can be avoided. I'm gonna assume you know those things and I will not insult your intelligence by going into a great amount of detail, but rather I'm going to concentrate a bit more on the sort of places where we're just a bit distracted or we're just not thinking about our handbag and purse safety. We're not keeping that top of mind, maybe because we're having a good time. In my own experience, restaurants actually are a place where your purse will be very vulnerable. And I think that if you just use a few simple tactics, you'll keep your belongings a lot safer. One thing I notice a lot of when I go to restaurants is that women have their expensive handbags slung over the back of their chair. And so they'll have this just dangling off of there. And there are a number of issues with this. One is that it can just get bumped and knocked and often it is in the way of the servers, which I'm sure they don't love. But the other thing is that obviously it makes it vulnerable, right? How easy would it be for someone just to stroll by, lift that up, you may not even notice it and just walk off with it very very simple when you have a bag that's this size and even the size of my louis vuitton speedy as well this is crunched up but you you have an idea the best place to keep this is in your lap and that is actually etiquette wise the proper place to keep it so you put this down onto your lap and then you use your napkin and you cover your handbag with your napkin which also keeps it nice and clean you don't have to worry about it getting kicked around or accidentally falling on the floor that is the ideal spot and if you possibly can bring a smaller size bag a lot of times where i felt a bit vulnerable safety wise in terms of my luxury handbags is when they're wide open and you're rummaging through it to get something try and limit this if you can if you're traveling somewhere and you're using the subway a lot one trick that i do even here at home in toronto canada which is relatively safe is if you're in a situation where you know you're going in and out of like transit and you're tapping your card on and off meaning your subway card. It's nice to have a bag that has an outside pocket like this. I mean, it would be even better if it had a little zip, but so that you're not opening this completely to access your Metro card, you can just slip it in here and pull it in and out rather easily. Of course, it's reasonable to assume that if you have that pocket and you can access it easily, then a pickpocket could also access it easily. But if you keep this towards you or tucked under your arm, you know, just in general, keeping your hand on top of your bag is always a pretty good practice. Keeping your pockets zipped up, keeping everything locked up, you know, don't walk around with this flap open. Maybe your speedy never full is not the best to take on a subway with you because of pickpockets. Yeah, I think you know that, but just a little tip that it's nice to have a little side pocket for the things you need to get in and out of all the time so that you're not like cracking everything open. You know, this is a bit of a production to open. You've got to open this flap and then there's another one underneath and I'll show you, right? So there's this flap. So, I mean, you don't want to be in public cracking all these open, digging around here, getting the wallet out, then, you know, closing that one. You don't want to do that. You want to have that somewhere easy to access, but that is a little bit under your control. Definitely not the back pocket. You guys know that, right? Don't put your phones or your cards or money in your back pocket that you're just asking for trouble if you do that in terms of pickpocketing. So another thing I wanna to talk to you about is when you're traveling and you're packing your suitcase, don't pack your expensive handbags inside of your suitcase. You can be separated from your suitcase. You don't know who's opening up your bags and what they're gonna do when they see the extremely tempting treat of a multi-thousand dollar handbag just sitting there in your luggage don't do it don't pack it in take it with you in your handbag in a bigger bag if you need to your carry-on i would say don't even put it in like those little roll-on carry-ons that you like put in the upper compartment in the airplane keep it in your big purse for this reason personally i travel with a longchamp le pliage the larger size and if i want to take a luxury handbag with me if i did take this chanel one for example the way i would play this is that this would fit inside the le pliage obviously but i would use this as a wallet does that make sense so i might not even take another separate little wallet or if i had that wallet that would be inclined to here it's empty just throw that as the luggage keep your cards and everything in here treat this as a wallet and fit as much as you can in here to save space 
carry it on with you for sure. Or you don't want to go that route. You may have a nice foldable handbag and I want to show you that the Speedy folds up quite nicely. So it does become quite compact and you can travel with this inside of a La Pliage. And don't forget this actually, if you do have a Speedy, it is kind of its own luggage actually. So you could fill it up and then still sink it inside of your La Pliage. So definitely carry these with you. Keep them as close to you as possible when you travel because that is a real point of vulnerability when this is not within arm's reach, right? That is always a point of vulnerability when it comes to carrying expensive luxury goods. So certainly another time that I felt very vulnerable is when I have a new purchase, which doesn't happen very often. I'm very intentional and minimalist about the luxury goods that I own. But let me tell you, when you're walking around with an expensive bag inside of a beautiful luxury paper shopping bag, you feel like you're on top of the world, which is part of the appeal of luxury purchases is that exhilaration of buying them and having them all in this beautiful packaging. But that is actually a moment of you being and myself being very vulnerable because here's the thing, you're not used to carrying it around. And this is a very easy place for you to misplace it. And probably, I mean, I can't speak for every city in the world. Obviously mugging is a very real concern, but I'd say you're probably more likely to forget something that you're not used to carrying behind than maybe any other scenario in terms of having something lost to theft. I mean. I think that you should, as tempting as it might be to buy it, get it out of the way and do some more shopping, I think you should leave the actual purchase to the end of your shopping experience. If you're following what I'm saying, say you're planning to go to Celine and buy a handbag, you know, this is on your to-do list, you're treating yourself. Don't buy it at the beginning, as exhilarating that, as that might be. Wait till the end and then go home after you have it because every place you visit every department store, every other boutique that you go to is an opportunity for you to forget that bag behind because you're not used to carrying it with you. And you might think, oh, but I spent so much. It's so meaningful. I'm going to watch it like a hawk. You'd be surprised. You can get distracted if you're looking at other things. I mean, there's just a million ways it could go wrong. Don't go and eat after you've bought a really expensive handbag. Take it home. One place that I have heard lots of people having their brand new, not even unwrapped yet bag get stolen is from restaurants where they've seated it on the floor next to them, even under the table. Even if they don't forget it, say it's behind you or underneath your chair, you would think that being underneath your chair would be quite secure. No, someone can just pop by and grab it in a heartbeat, right? It's so easy to grab a bag that's already packaged and just pass it off as your own and just quickly walk out of the restaurant or wherever, even more so if it's open air. So don't do that. Once you buy something luxury, take it home right away. Do not dilly dally around. If it does get stolen, and I hope this never happens to you, but if you've purchased it on a credit card, which I would definitely suggest you do, if you buy it with your credit card or maybe your debit card, you've got to see what your situation is. It often has an insurance on it for I think a month after purchase, if it does end up getting stolen. But of course, check with your credit card. This could be different in different countries. I'm just saying, in my experience, I once actually had a bicycle stolen, but because I had purchased it on my credit card, I had to go file a police report, but then I did claim it. And then I was able to get the money for the bicycle back. Of course, I hope you're not buying things like this on credit, right? The purpose of the credit card is that you buy it on there and then you pay it off and then you get the points as well. And then you have the insurance for having purchased it as well. Definitely not something I would ever pay cash for. Of course, a reminder, as I've said in a previous video, I don't flaunt my things. I don't think it's good to flaunt things. I think that makes you a bit of a target. If you're nervous, really nervous about bringing something on a specific vacation because of the location or just you think you're gonna be in crowds a lot or whatever the case may be, maybe it's where you're going, don't do it. Life is long. You'll have plenty of opportunities to bring these expensive bags around with you to other locations, other trips. Take the long view. These things are supposed to be fun. It's supposed to add to your vacation. It's not supposed to be something that is weighing on you the whole time and that you're worried about and makes you nervous. That's not fun. But at the same time, don't be afraid of enjoying your things on vacation. You just got to judge it the best you can. You know, follow your intuition tuition. If your gut instinct is telling you that's not a good idea, then don't, don't take it to that place, that venue, that concert, don't do it. And sometimes, and I think that this does not get stated enough. It's not so much where you're going. It's your level of distraction that you've got to figure out. How distracted will you be in that setting? And when you're distracted, that makes you a target. One thing I've been thinking about too, is that does carrying a really visible logo make you more vulnerable to theft? And I mean, I don't know, probably a police officer or somebody who deals with a lot of theft claims would better be able to tell you this, but there are so many fakes now and so many people carry fakes. I don't really think it matters that 
much or perhaps as much as it maybe used to be before the market was absolutely flooded, before everybody had a logo bag, which it feels like they do now. When they were a bit more rarefied, I would say, yeah, it probably would make you a bit more conspicuous, but I'm not sure that that is the case because there are so many non-authentic bags on the market. I don't think it does. I think it's actually your behavior it is more important in the grand scheme. Of course, is a beautiful leather handbag gonna be more appealing to a thief than a disgustingly raggedy tote bag that's busted? Of course it is, but whether you have the logo bag or not, like I'm not sure I would base taking it with me or not on that criteria. I would be thinking more about like, does it zipper closed? Is it the right size from where I'm going? Is it practical? Does it have that side pocket to hold my subway card? Or some people want to put on lip balm seven times a day and so it's better to take a purse that you can easily access than one like this Chanel where you'd have to dig around in there to fish it out every single time. You've got to know yourself and you've got to do the right amount of planning and a little bit of forethought I think goes a long way in these scenarios. The distraction is the thing that I, if not, if you take away nothing else, remember that the distraction is when it's dangerous, right? That's when you become a real target for people to grab things. And of course, I know that there's tons of other scenarios out there, but again, I welcome you to just let me know what you think down below. I know I've missed lots of things and these are just the things that bubbled up to the top of my head, but I would love to hear from you what works for you and what your strategies are. I've got some other videos about this Louis Vuitton Speedy and you can check it out. I'll just link those up here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.